Congressman Ted Lieu is one of three Democrats who drafted those articles of impeachment against the president. They introduced the articles this morning. They've been co-signed by more than 200 other members, enough to officially pass the House. Congressman Lieu, welcome back. Uh, thank you, Alex. So those articles, what specifically do they say? What is your basic argument? So what happened on January 6th is that a mob violently attacked our nation's capital, resulting in multiple deaths. They were hunting for lawmakers. They tried to hang Vice President Pence. They wanted to assassinate Speaker Pelosi, and they wanted to disrupt Congress from accepting their certified electoral college results. Donald Trump was the person who incited this mob to attack the Capitol. That's why we had this article of impeachment called incitement to insurrection to remove him from office as soon as possible. We know that there are enough Democrats uh, to pass this through the House. Have you talked with any of your Republican colleagues? Are you going to have any Republican support on this? Uh, so we have reached out to a number of Republicans. We crafted this article narrowly. We try to base it on undisputed evidence and facts. There's videotape of the president's speech. There's videotape of this mob attacking the Capitol. And we hope to get some Republican support. And we'll see what happens on Wednesday for the floor vote. So if it passes the House, which is expected, uh, it will then move to the Senate where there would be a potential trial. Senator Mitch McConnell has suggested that there's not going to be a trial before President Trump is out of office. So this would be for something that comes after he's out. Of course, the point, main point of impeachment uh, is to try to remove the president from office. There are some that say, why go through all of this? Why put everybody through this division? Why go through this process when the guy's leaving in a few days anyways? What do you say? So Senator McConnell could bring back the Senate much earlier and act on this article of impeachment immediately if he wanted to. So the first reason is to remove a dangerous and delusional president. Second reason is that an impeachment would strip Donald Trump of his taxpayer-funded benefits, such as a lifetime pension, office space, and office staff. It would also prevent him from holding any other office again in terms of elected position in the future. And finally, we need future generations and the world to know that if you're going to incite a violent attack on our nation's capital, Congress is going to respond swiftly and strongly. Would an impeachment do all of that or would that need to be a Senate conviction with the Senate holding a second vote to do that and that would require 17 Republican votes? Uh, so I'm a member of the House. We can only do what we can in the House, which is to do their impeachment. It's essentially an indictment of the president. And then you're right, there will need to be a conviction by the Senate. We do hope the Senate will convict. And we do now have a number of senators that have said that Donald Trump should resign. We also had Senator Ben Sass say that he's open to articles of impeachment. So this is a different situation than it was with the first impeachment. Can you actually imagine a scenario, though, where there's 17 Republicans who sign off on this? Because right now it's only a handful that have even made this suggestion. So my view of politics is that everything seems impossible until it happens. So we don't know and we can't assume that a Senate will or won't do something. We have to do our constitutional duty in the House. I also know that if they do choose to do this trial um, not immediately, then Senator Schumer will be the leader in the Senate. And there are certainly um, things that Democrats can do to try to persuade Republicans uh, to vote for this. But at the end of the day, we in the House have to do our constitutional duty. And Senator Schumer becomes the Senate Majority Leader on January 20th when Kamala Harris becomes the Vice President of the United States. All right, Wednesday, uh, you were there as all this happened. Talk to us for a moment about your personal experience, what it felt like being inside the Capitol as all of this chaos happened. Uh, so actually, because of the pandemic, they didn't want most members of Congress inside the Capitol. Uh, they only wanted the members of Congress that were going to speak on the specific states that were going to be objected to. So I was actually watching the joint session from my office on the fourth floor of the Cannon House office building. At about 1.15, I hear loud banging on all the office doors, including ours. And then a Capitol Police officer uh, comes in after we open the door, and he says, you have to evacuate immediately uh, to the Longworth office building. So my chief of staff and I, um, basically uh, ran down those steps, uh, five uh, sort of a lot of steps. Five uh, flights, five, yeah. 
lights of those and went to the basement, went to the tunnels, and went to Longworth office building. Eventually, we went to Congressman David Sisley's office in the Rayburn office building. And after the fear had passed, we concluded we need to remove this president as soon as possible. So we started literally drafting the articles of impeachment later that day while on lockdown in his office. Look, we know you've never been a, a big fan of President Trump. Uh, you express that in Twitter almost every day. But I'm wondering, after this experience, how would you define Donald Trump's legacy? As a failure, as the only president in U.S. history uh, that uh, was impeached twice by two separate Congresses, and uh, at the end of the day, a lot of his promises never happened. He never got Mexico to pay for the wall. He never even really built a wall. Uh, he made all these promises uh, to help the American people, and that didn't happen. And in fact, we have the worst pandemic response uh, in world history. And I urge everyone to please wear a mask and engage in social distancing and wash your hands frequently. And by the way, I'm very glad that Dr. Drew is feeling better as well. Oh, yeah, thank you. And, and real quickly, do, do you see that this moment may possibly lead to more bipartisanship, may possibly make people rethink some of what's happened? Are you seeing any evidence of that? Yes. So this moment was different than the first impeachment because we have a number of Republican cabinet secretaries. They have resigned in protest. We have Republican members in both the House and Senate calling on Trump to resign. Some have said that they want the 25th Amendment uh, to be invoked. So we're in a very different situation because, again, you can't incite a mob to violently attack our nation's capital. There is no justification whatsoever for that. All right. Congressman Ted Lieu, thank you so much for coming on and sharing your views. We appreciate it. And uh, we have reached out to our Republican members of Congress that are local as well. And we hope that they will come on as well. Still to come. Thank you.